Hey there! This video continues the previous Auto API controllers video and will generate client proxies for C Sharp, JavaScript, and Angular. All right, let's generate the C Sharp proxies. I'm going to navigate to the HTTP API client, specifically the module class. And as you can see, it is already configured with the dynamic C Sharp proxies. With the remote service name, being the issue management. If we get back to the controllers that we've created, we can see that it's got the same name as the remote services right here, issue management. If we take a look at the console test tab of our HTTP API client right here, and check out the appsettings.json, and then check out the remote services, we can see that the name issue management of our remote services has got this endpoint right here. These three projects are still running in the back, the auth server, the HTTP API host, and the web host. And as they are running, I'm gonna navigate to the console test tab, to this class exactly, the client demo service. We've injected the customer group app service, and we're testing the get list async method. We just wanna take a look. And right here in the back, I've created a customer group, Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I've called it group one with description one. And I've also created a customer that is onto group one as well. And so as they are running, I wanna take a look and see what happens when we trigger this method. I'm also using Redis in the back using Docker. And if we take a look right here, we can see our customer. Now the difference between the static and the dynamic proxies of C-sharp is that static C-sharp proxies get generated on development, whereas the dynamic C-sharp proxies get generated on runtime. What does that mean? It means that the static C-sharp proxies are gonna give us a better performance because they've been already generated before runtime. The downside of it, however, is that you're gonna need to regenerate the static proxies every time you change something in the API endpoint definition. But the dynamic C-sharp proxies already get generated on runtime. So if you ever change the definition of the API endpoint, you're not gonna have to worry about regenerating them because they already generate on runtime. The downside of it, however, is that it could get you bad performance. Unlike the static c -sharp proxies that give you a good performance because they have been generated on development. So I'm going to change this to add static HTTP client proxies. And I'm going to keep our endpoint running and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to navigate to the client project. And I'm going to open up a terminal right here, and I'm gonna write the command ABP generate proxy, and the type of it is gonna be C sharp, and the module is gonna be, I'm gonna take it from here just to make sure, and the endpoint is gonna be the one taken from here. I'm gonna copy it, and I'm also gonna add this little parameter right here without contracts because I don't want them generating proxies for all the contracts only the controllers and we can see our client proxies right here And if we refer back to this, the get list async method coming from the customer app service, I'm gonna find the customer client proxy. And here is the get list async method that we were testing. And let's debug it. And let us run this test again. And voila, it triggered. Let's see. and the same customer.
Now as for the JavaScript proxies generation, I'm going to run the three projects, the HTTP API host, the web host, and the auth server. So this is the HTTP API host, this is the auth server, and this is the web host. I want to show if we go to ABP service proxy script, and we can see the JavaScript proxies that we can generate. And then if we move to Swagger, we can see the customer and the customer group endpoints that we're going to generate the JavaScript proxies for. And of course, it's not going to generate for the accrued customer group. Like we said, this one is coming from the application layer. And the web host is not related to the application layer. And now I'm going to get back to the web project. And I'm going to open a terminal right here. And I'm going to type in the same command, abp generate proxy. The type is going to be JavaScript. The module is going to be the same name, issue, management. And the endpoint is going to be the HTTP API host. If we take a look right here, we'll see the WW root, and we can see the client proxies right here the ones that we've taken a look at just now. Now the JavaScript proxies are dynamic by default. If you wanted to make them static, you're going to have to disable it manually. So right here we are fixing the options of the dynamic JavaScript proxies and we're using the disable module method so we can make them static. And let's rerun. And now after rerunning, if we take a look, we can see that it's already been triggered. And right here in the index page of the issue management, we've grabbed the proxy script just like this right here. So we can take a look at it and test it in the index page, which is right here. More specifically, right here, a sample page for the issue management module. If you see here, this sample page message. We can see our client proxies right here. And if we go to the console and trigger one of the methods, the get list method with the max result count of two, because we only got one, and we can see our customer. And last but not least, we're going to generate proxies for Angular. We still have the API running in the back. We'll need to make sure it's running. And then I'm going to open it in a terminal and I'm going to type in the command ABP generate proxies. The type is going to be Angular. The module is issue management and the URL is the endpoint of the HTTP API host. And finally, if we take a look right here, we're going to see that we've got issue management and dev app, which are these two. Now, if I don't specify the target, then it might generate the proxies in the dev app and we do not want that. So I'm going to add the target parameter right here and I'm going to specify issue management. And let's see. And we've got the TypeScript proxies generated for us. Let's take a look. And it is right here. And we can see the proxies generated for us. Now this has been the Auto API Controllers and Proxy Generation with ABP. Please refer back to the documents since we couldn't cover all of their details in one video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.